another one of your specialties I see is sexuality and sexual issues. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a lot of things going on with the LGBTQ community. Yeah, yes. I think I got all the letters right. I'm sorry if I didn't. Yes. But um, what are some of the things that you address with that? Like, do you help people identify their sexuality within themselves or something? Yeah, it's it's a, you know, sex and sexuality is so vast. Like when I got into the work specifically like sex therapy, it's a whole other world in itself. So you got um, BDSM, which is like bondage. Um, I'm getting the acronyms uh, sadism, masochism and uh, dominance. There we go. Uh, so is that world is the world of kink. You got, um, you know, in orgasmic issues, erectile dysfunction issues, people who are trying to define themselves in their own sexuality and their sexual self, bringing out their sexual self, healing after because sexual abuse and assault is one of my specialties as well as healing and reclaiming your sexual self after you know, sexual abuse history or trauma history. So like I said, the sex world is very vast. I've had several different types of cases um, as it relates to sex and sexuality with couples and individuals. And I've also had polycules, uh, throuples, uh, people. What is that, if you don't mind speaking about that? are people who are in a relationship of three. Or more. Okay. Yes. So I've had those experiences too. So it's, it's just a multitude of different things that, uh, come with sex therapy and sex and sexual issues. And so it might be people having anxiety about sexual performance, uh, porn addiction. I don't really like the word addiction or sexual uh, porn compulsion, sexual compulsion, things like that. Because sometimes infidelity ties into those things as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's a whole world. It's a whole new world. I felt like I was a fish out of water. Um, my first... <laughs> My first case was just incredibly difficult. And my sex therapy supervisor was like, gosh, she, you know, she was like, you got fed to the wolves right away because it was not an easy case at all. All right. So with the sexuality, do you help? Like, how do you help them? Do you help them talk through the issues? Do you help them? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, what kind of tips do you give them to kind of if you because it's so vast, right? And whatever you, you what you just said is so many different things that we can go into. But mm-hmm. if you don't mind, just so that mm-hmm. I can get a little clarity and sure. my audience as well, mm-hmm. can you speak about a case? You know, and sure. what was it? What was the outcome? I'm trying to think <laughs> about a good case. So a case I had, um, this individual had um, masochistic things. So a masochist is a person who likes to receive pain or humiliation. A sadist is a person that likes to give it. So he was a masochist. He liked to receive humiliation, uh, but he also had a fixation with his penis size. So he liked to be humiliated about his penis size, but at the same time, feeling the way about his penis size. So he felt like it was too small, but he liked to be humiliated about it being too small. And the thing that made it kind of um, add an extra layer was that women who look like me, petite, fair, like more fair skinned black women, he liked to have them tell them those things. So uh, when he sought me out, I said, so why did you seek me out? (laughs) Because, you know, in my mind, it makes me feel like you just want me to humiliate you as well. Uh, But what came from it, and he did have some issues with me and, you know, my supervisor was like, you know, um, are you comfortable with him seeing you as a sexual object? Because that's what you are right now. You know, and so that was a challenge. But so the big piece of it was the challenge of having a healing relationship with a woman who he typically likes to humiliate him to be a healing and healthy. woman. And so that in itself was a breakthrough when it got to a place where he said, you know what? After our sessions and it sounds, you know, from the outside looking at it, it can sound a little bizarre. He's like, I don't masturbate anymore. So that says that now when I come to you, it's specifically for therapy, for therapy. for, for healing. Yes. Yes. And that the relationship in itself told him that this is this. It doesn't have to be this thing that humiliates me. It actually can be healing because it came from a trauma where a person that um, they were with was humiliating his penis size. Yeah. So he took that very thing and made it an arousal point for him. Oh, that was his way of healing. Yes. Yes. So it, it was a lot of times correcting and saying, you know, some reality talk like we cannot compare it would you would have to literally line up every man on the planet to compare your penis 
you know, because it got it became a fixation and we had to work through that. So it got to a point where, you know, I always tell people the goal is to fire me in a good way, because that says to me that you got a good handle on things and you know how to cope with the things that you were struggling with when you initially claimed to see me. Nice, nice. That's a good way to put it. To mm-hmm. get to fire, hire me to fire me. Yes, yes, nice. yes. Because I know we have succeeded. Fire me means you have a successful um, termination versus I'm mad at you or I said something to them that they didn't like. Or it's a number of things why people quit. Or it's just a wrong time in life and they have too much going on. But a successful termination is like, hey, I think I'm good now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, that's an interesting story. Yeah. And a good breakthrough, how he was able to confront that issue and was able mm-hmm. to like heal in some way, form and fashion to move mm-hmm. forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. Most definitely. And it was great to see that healing process break through and come through and that it wasn't, uh, you know, this issue was costing thousands of dollars at, at that. Those chat lines and stuff, that stuff yeah. costs money. So it was good. It's like, OK, I'm saving money. I'm not. You know <laughs> what I mean? My marriage is good. It's not because all those things were at, you know, at risk of losing. Yeah. Yeah. That, I guess that's, that's an amazing feeling to be mm-hmm. in your craft, to be in your field and see someone heal on the other end and being like, I'm happy that I was able to make a positive impact in your life mm-hmm. and you can let some of that trauma go and move absolutely. forward. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the part uh, that is rewarding because I just look at our, you know, we are the tool as therapists uh, and at the same time, you know, we can be the catalyst for change. Because the person I say, I'm just a flashlight in a cave uh, or the passenger and they drive it in their car uh i'm the front seat passenger but you know it's your you have the answers ultimately but you just need somebody to highlight some things that you just didn't see before definitely definitely Mm -hmm.